Have you ever felt like your personal knowledge management system has become clogged with low value notes? And then when you try to review them, you have little to no understanding of the context of why you took the note in the first place? then you're not alone. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Jeffrey and in today's video I'm going to go through my guidelines for taking better literature notes to improve the quality of the information that ends up in our digital minds. Let's dive in and take a look. Okay so let's take a look at the overall structure for my literature note and then we're going to dive into what each of the different components and sections do as part of this note and how it works within my digital mind and if you haven't seen any of the previous videos in my digital mind series i would suggest going back and watching them because you can see how some of these things function in uh, real life especially my demo of crafting evergreen notes so let's dive into a few housekeeping items first which are what a couple of the different emojis and titles do. So this emoji here for the note is really is just what indicates that it is a literature note within my system and is used to query it along with the key and keyword. It redirects it to a specific query on my keyword page that kind of groups all, all the related literature notes together. And then the literature note title is just provides an easy to understand overview of what the note is going to be about within my query table which we'll see in a second. The next thing is this novelty index and this is an idea that I got from Ali Abdal where when you come across an idea you write about how surprising that idea is to you when you first encounter it and this is really good to combat that curse of knowledge because as you learn more you forget how surprising some ideas were when you first heard about them or, or learned about them. So I have a, a simplified index here. One lightning bolt really is something that I have an understanding of, but I don't think is in my system yet. And this happens a lot when you're kind of first building your digital mind because you know a lot of things, but you have not yet written about them in your system. So you might want to uh, capture them to use later on. The two lightning bolts is it's a new idea, but it's not that surprising. It kind of follows from things that I already know. Uh, and then the three lightning bolt is something that kind of just is like, whoa, this is interesting. This is this is a cool idea or it's a, an idea that I knew that was presented in an interesting and surprising way. So those are the things that I'm going to be most likely to be really excited to to write about and to craft evergreen notes from. And I have it specifically set up here as a block property with these two colons because that way I can query it in the query table. It will show up as a column. So here you can see that when I'm looking through my list of literature notes to to craft into evergreen notes, I can see an indication of the novelty index here in, as a column. So that might help direct me towards what I might want to to write about. So that is the novelty index. And then we have the next sections, which is what do I find interesting? Do I agree? And what are the connections that I want to make with this note? So interesting is really just expanding on what I personally find interesting about this idea. Why am I motivated to take a note about this? What is it that drew me to it in the first place? I might expand on why I found it so uh, surprising for my novelty index. Agree. Now this is something that is really a lot of times just a reminder to not only take notes about the things that I agree with, but perhaps start bringing in things that I currently disagree with. You know, why do I agree or why do I disagree? It'll be a also a good way to highlight if there's any gaps in my knowledge. If I agree with something, but I can't articulate why I agree, then perhaps I need to uh, reevaluate whether or not I should be agreeing with, with it right now. So this is another area where I might talk about personal observations or experiences. Something might have happened or I might have seen something in my life that reinforces this idea and that's that's why I agree with it. So this is a good place to kind of bring in more of that personal nature and tie it to your real life with your uh, literature notes. And then connections, a lot of times when I'm writing literature notes, I'll think about 
evergreen notes that are already in my system that I think this is related to. And this is just a place where I can capture those initial thoughts. So I don't have to try and remember those connections in my mind for when I go ahead and craft the evergreen note. This is just a place where I can write them and it helps with that connection process. And then the one area that doesn't have a, a title but is really important is the summary of the idea in your own words. What is this idea that I am reading about or learning about? How can I put it into my own words? And then I kind of go through the process of what is interesting about it? Do I agree? And what are the connections that I want to make? The thing that I find very useful about doing this is Number one, before I would write literature notes that were just maybe a couple of sentences that when I would go back and review them, perhaps after you know a period of time, I wouldn't have a lot of information to craft a good evergreen note. I wouldn't have a lot of the context around the note or why I took the note to be able to use to understand how it fits within my system. So these questions are designed to make me think about how do I want to incorporate this into the broader scheme of my digital mind? And then the other thing is I had a lot of low value notes. If there wasn't enough friction to taking a note, and a lot of the apps that we have now make it really easy to take notes on what you're reading, which is good, but I think an unintended consequence of that is you can end up with a lot of really low value notes and kind of the most meaningful ones get lost in the process. So if I have a structure like this, then what happens is I think twice before I take a note on something. So sure, I'm going to be taking less notes, but the ones that I take are going to be more meaningful. And that's what I want. I want a digital mind that is meaningful information uh, that I can use and refer back to for my future projects. So the other thing I'll mention is that there's a fine balance between too much and not enough friction. You want to have some, but you don't want to make it so hard to take a note that you end up taking none. So the one way that I've made it easier to take notes is to use a text expander to automatically populate all of these sections when I am going to write the literature notes. So I just have to write my ideas rather than worry about creating the all the headings and the sections and the reminders for the note. Everything is pre-populated. I just need to fill in my own ideas. So that's it for this video. Let me know down in the comments below if you found anything useful, interesting, or what you do for your literature note capture process. I would love to hear about it and I will see you all next time.